Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and joining me today is Annie Thornton from our editorial group. She recently moved to Silver Lake, California, and she's taking advantage of that beautiful outside weather. And Annie, I understand you kind of converted your front yard into more of a living space. Tell me about that. Yeah. Hey, Rick. Good to see you. Um, yeah, I, like you said, recently moved here, and um, it's the first time I've had any outdoor space. You know, before this, I was living in apartments. The yard is just kind of a simple box rectangle um the decomposed granite was here the fence was here and it was it had a really nice structure and a really nice shell but we really wanted to add some life and and lushness and just create a space where we could lounge dine um and also garden particularly edible gardens and i see you've got the bocce ball that's the first thing i noticed <laughs> yeah <laughs> well if you look at the yard it's it's one big box that's kind of a, a gravel dg square and it just looked like it had to be a bocce court. And I had the balls and they just kind of sit there and entice you to play. So let's talk about some of the key components in the yard here. I, I see some planters, I see some lights, I see, I mean, it really looks like almost like a cool little outdoor cafe. Yeah, and you really hit on it with outdoor living. You know, it's California and that's kind of how we treated the space is a place that we could really spend a lot of time in and do a lot of different things. So. Um, kind of the main thing you'll see are these metal feed troughs that we have in the corner. And we both really wanted to grow edibles. And I knew that I wanted to grow them in these metal feed troughs that had been used by um, farm animals. I think they're traditionally for water and feed. They're very easy to use. All you have to do is drill a hole in the, drill some holes in the bottom, have some drainage and just kind of pop them in when you purchase those and you're deciding what kind of things you want to plant, how much mm -hmm. soil does that take? Yeah, well, so we got two foot tall planters just because we wanted to grow some deeper rooting plants, um, tomatoes, but currently we just have lettuces and chards, which are really shallow rooting plants. So you really don't need a lot of soil. And actually a pretty cool tip I learned from a, a house article that one of our contributors, Lauren Dunnick Coyne wrote was, um, you can fill part of the planter with empty water bottles, which is actually what we have in our planter. Um, the bottom third or so is empty water bottles to reduce the amount of soil you have to use. And it also helps with drainage and also kind of keeps the, the soil from getting too soggy, which is something you don't want with plants. And it's probably um, a lot lighter to move around. So you can actually yeah. move that. It's 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 kind of permanent I'm, I'm sure the way you, you did it but if you had to move it it's not going to kill you uh, i'm not going to try but yeah we <laughs> probably could. but what's really great about these is you know we are in a rental space so if we do choose to move once they are empty they're really easy to pick up and move um so you know they're not stuck here at all how's your sunlight move in the yard so uh, how did you consider that when you were putting your plantings and you were setting it up you know, we're really lucky here. We are in an east facing yard, so we get morning light. Um, and so the planters are oriented to really take in the sun as it comes up over the hill that's across from where we are. Um, we get really nice, you know, direct light in the morning and then it passes over the house and um, sets on the west. We just wanted to pull it back far enough so that um, the fence in front of the yard didn't shade the planters. So that was really the only um, consideration for us because we were just really lucky to get good morning light. I'm sure a lot of people are already inspired just seeing you in this sort of oasis setting. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's just relaxing seeing where you are. I know, we're really lucky here. Um, another fun thing about the planters is you'll notice one of them's filled with water right now. Um, that's gonna be a planter also, but it's been pretty hot in LA and um, so we just kind of decided to turn it into a pool for the last few days. Just we've had a heat wave and coming from San Francisco, I'm definitely not ready for this weather. And um, until our tomatoes are ready to go into the trough, we're just kind of using it to cool off and then water the plants with. Is that for the dog too? Does the dog jump in there? She hasn't gone in yet. She's pretty furry. So I'm waiting to put her in until we're done using the planter or <laughs> done using the pool. I'm also seeing some really nice, uh, some lighting there. So that must be nice at night. The lights come on, you just chill out back there. So I, I knew I wanted string lights, cafe lights. We've written about them in in-house articles and I think they just really add a nice cozy ambiance. And, and like you said, Rick, it just transports you. And now that, you know, the only vacation I'm taking right now is in my front yard. Um, it's fun to feel like 
we're in um, some you know back patio somewhere and and all you really need is an outlet and a way to hang it well annie's outdoor cafe i think is something that's going to be coming here where are you dining tell me about the dining situation yeah and so you know outdoor furniture is also a really important part of outdoor living and we're lucky we have a couple areas set up in the far corner we have this kind of beer garden style picnic table we we wanted to put it further out into the yard as a way to really draw you out and, and kind of take advantage of all corners. And then in the middle of the yard, we just have a couple of kind of rustic Adirondack style chairs that we've set up. It's fun to kind of sit in and take the neighborhood in. Yeah, it's more inviting too when you see that out in front of someone's home. It, 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 are you meeting more people now that you're spending a little bit more time in the yard? I know there's a fence there, but are you yeah. able to kind of interact a little bit? Well, the fence is about waist high and, you know, a lot of people are just out on the street. We, we've picked up a, or we adopted a dog during the quarantine and she, the fence is low enough that she can pop up and check out what's going on too. And yeah. She, hey, oh, what's going people, on over there? Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of people, she's been a real good way to introduce us to the neighbors. And we're hoping also with the string lights, um, that also kind of creates a nice glow. We don't have street lights here and people are walking and it's just a way to, to make the space more inviting. Well, it's a really beautiful space you've created there, Annie, and hopefully we'll be able to have a house gathering of some sort down the I, road, some kind I of, know. right? I, Everyone's craving like getting back together. It's nuts. This Everyone's like, that's such a great place to have a party. I'm like, good thing we moved here in, you know, January. Right. So hopefully in the not too distant future, we can share it with people. Thank you for inviting us into your space and we'll talk to you again soon. Great. It was really nice talking to you, Rick. See you soon.